Well, thank you everyone who joined us and welcome um, to this event uh, that's part of London Craft Week, um, organized by the Barakat Trust. Uh, I'm Saif Al Rashidi, the director of the trust, and we're joined by my colleague Mick Denton, who's in charge of the business elements of what we do, um, Hani Abdel Adir and Mohammed Abdel Wahid, um, who are two master craftsmen joining us from Cairo, um, and hopefully. Um, all being well, we won't have any problems with technology. Um, and we welcome you to this online event. It's the first webinar that we do. Um, and we're very excited about people joining us from different parts of the world. Um, so we hope that it will be a chance to explore the Khayameya, the tent making or the Egyptian applique work online. Um, and also that you'll have the chance to ask Mohammed and Hani any questions you want, have a conversation. Uh, feel that it's an informal event that we can all participate in. Um, the way that we're going to do it is I'm going to just give a brief introduction about the craft and where it comes from. Uh, and then Mohammed and Hani will, will explain different parts of the process. And also, because this is London Craft Week and one of the important questions is the question of design, they'll also talk about how they do, how they modernize designs, how they take tradition and do different things with it. Um, and so it's partially about the process and the technique, but also about how can a very traditional and historic craft survive uh, and flourish today uh, internationally. So, let me share my screen. We call this event the Egyptian tent makers as part of a global world because I think it's very important to realize that even though this is a very ancient Egyptian tradition, we have some examples of applique work on leather from, from, from pharaonic times and examples from medieval times um, in cotton. Um, it's always been connected to the rest of the world and it's always been uh, like any good craftsman, you have to think about what are market trends, what are demands in different places. Um, fabrics have often been exported. Um, and so the Egyptian fabric tradition and the textile tradition in Egypt is a very long and a very important one, out of which um, this is one surviving craft. But the first image I wanted to show you is uh, this image from the early 20th century um, of tent makers in Cairo making pieces with pharaonic designs. Many of these pieces with pharaonic designs were made for European visitors to Egypt coming on the grand tour and for other occasions. Um, and just a reminder that the idea of thinking of an international market and international demand is not a new idea. It's always been part of um, the craftsmanship of textile production in Egypt and in other places. Um, this is a photo of one of the last covered streets in Cairo, uh, Shara al Khayameya, which is the tent maker street uh, where um, Muhammad and Hani are based. Um, and together with my colleague Sam Bauker, we've been working on researching the history and the traditions that form part of this valuable textile craft. Um, if you look at the photo, you'll see that there are different things going on in the street. There are some people who are making handmade uh, applique work, and there are other people that are selling printed fabric using the traditional designs um, of applique. And each one has its own market. Of course, the, th the thing that concerns us today is the handmade applique work, because um, it's, a, it's, a hand, it's, a it's a handcraft, it's fine, it takes a lot of time and lots, um, and it's quite costly to do. Um, but I think one of the remarkable things about this tradition is that it survived for a thousand years. Um, there are other places in the Middle East and in other places around the world where applique work um, existed and exists, but in some places it's died out as a tradition. In Egypt it hasn't, and it's still in use, which I think is a remarkable thing. 
Traditionally, the reason that um, we refer to this as tent making is that it was to produce ceremonial tents used for weddings, uh, celebrations, funerals, um, public events. Um, and very importantly, it was used for political and state events. So if the ruler of Egypt or someone important would appear in public uh, outside his palace, um, he would usually appear in a handmade applique tent. And that's where this tradition comes from. Um, and so historically, the pieces are very, very large pieces. This is an image of King Fuad, uh, an early 20th century king of Egypt, um, sitting on the throne in the 20s in uh, a traditional tent. And in case you think it was only men that appeared in public in such uh, constructions, actually, this is Queen Nosli, King Fuad's wife, reviewing a public event also from a handmade tent. So they were very, very common. They were used by all members of society. Um, and this is uh, to show you a detail of what, what they look like in color, given that the other photos were black and white. So very intricate, very elaborate designs, many of which are drawn from the tradition of Islamic art, um, from other things as well. Um, I mentioned this being a very long and historic tradition. This is an example of an Egyptian applique fragment in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, England. Um, which is probably from the 14th century. And it's the same technique. They're very similar colors. They're very similar designs to patterns that Hani and Muhammad and their fathers and their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers have been making for generations. Um, and one thing to bear in mind is that this is a tradition that what you're making is temporary architecture. Buildings, they're made of fabric, but you erect a building and it, you use it for an hour or two for a wedding or whatever you want to use it to, and then you put all of the fabric away and the wooden bits away and store it for another occasion. So you often find that there's a very strong link between the patterns of these textiles and the patterns used on historic architecture in Cairo and in Egypt. This is a 15th century building in Cairo, the Sabil of Kait Bay. And if you look at the similarities between the textile fabric and the marble work, um, you'll find that um, they, they're working to, they're developing designs in parallel. So I think today most of these are smaller pieces that you'll find in a house, but actually these were used to construct spaces, as I mentioned. Um, I also want to emphasize the scale of how big these pieces are. Um, when I was looking at the number of people signed up for today's event, I realized that almost all of you are women. Um, and I wondered whether some of you are quilters because the applique work is similar to quilting. Um, this is a tradition that historically has been practiced by men. I think partially because the scale of the pieces is very large, they're very heavy, it's on very thick Um So even though Egypt has a tradition of embroidery and women involved in textile production or the de decorative textile production, this tradition is historically a male dominated one. Um, so if you look at the histories of Hani and Muhammad and their families, most of the people who have been involved in the trade and in the craft are men. Um, thinking about design very quickly, um, as you can see, many of the patterns traditionally used in these tent panels, which are about 575, centimeters by 2.7, 275 centimeters, so they're quite large, are based on the designs of Islamic architecture. But if you look closely, you'll find that there are also very Egypt, ancient Egyptian patterns like the lotus flower, um, which Muhammad is going to talk more about, which find their way into this traditional language. So in, in many respects, these pieces of fabric uh, combine the different facets of Egyptian identity. And the lotus flower was a very important and very well-liked um, emblem of Egypt, especially in modern times, in the early 20th century, when Egypt starts to become a nation state, the lotus flower becomes one of the emblems of the Egyptian nation. And you can see it in greater detail here. 
Um, I found this photo of an engagement party um, from the 90, probably the 60s or the 70s. And if you look um, all along the top of this tented panel is the lotus flower. The image on the right is of um, a less happy event, the funeral of the Shah of Iran, um, Muhammad Reza Pahlavi. And this is Empress Farah Diba um, in a tent receiving people who are coming to pay condolences. And if you look behind her are the details of the lotus flower, um, which finds its way, interestingly, into designs that are generally drawn from Islamic art and architecture. Um, it, I also want to remind you that crafts and each tradition is also linked to other things, that the tent makers, they have their own traditions and their own language, but some of the motifs are used in other forms of art and craft as well. So it's not an isolated tradition. This is from the early 20th century, um, a gift box made for the wedding of the Egyptian king Farouk uh, to, his, to Queen Farida. Uh, and if you, it's made in France actually, but it uses Egyptian designs and the design that's repeated all along um, is the lotus flower. Of course, one of the key things to think about in any craft is how can, how can we find markets that uh, sustain the craft and over the, over the recent years, the Egyptian tent makers have traveled abroad extensively to quilt fairs and craft fairs and exhibitions organized internationally by, by several people, including Jenny Bowker and John and Joan Fisher and uh, Ahmed Kamel and others, and also independently. And one of the big challenges and also the big opportunities when you travel and you go to new markets is to think, where is the demand and what do people look for and what do people like? And this panel with birds is very different from what I showed you in the past, uh, the past examples of geometric designs and arabesque designs. But I remember when I met Hani in Durham, maybe 10 years ago, and he started getting out many textile panels with these birds. He said, oh, one of the things I know is that English people like the panels with birds on. Um, and so, one of the things that's interesting as the craft has evolved is that more and more people are thinking of it as a textile picture to hang on the wall. That should, and so the demand for pieces that represent something is growing. Um, and perhaps the demand for pieces that are geometric in design might be declining. It's dependent on who the markets are and what they want. And increasingly, the market for these handmade textiles, which are labor intensive and therefore quite expensive is a more international market that is looking for things other than the traditional designs um, that I showed you in previous images. Here is another example um, of a very beautiful bird panel. I think Muhammad has a similar one behind him. Um, very finely made, many different colors. And as I mentioned, um, in the past 10 or 15 years, the tent makers have often been represented internationally and often win awards for being excellent examples of handmade um, uh, quilting and applique work and stitching. Um, and in some cases, like this uh, piece by Tara Softi, the Clint's The Kiss, they can be completely removed from um, local tradition, but they're still very beautiful in their own right. So most of today's event is with Hani and Mohammed. Um, and, I'm, and I'm just going to give an introduction. They've both come from families where at least the fourth generation of, of, of uh, tent maker in their family, they've inherited it from one generation to the next. Um, I mentioned the link between architecture and tent making. And this is an example of a 15th century building very close to the tent maker street in Cairo. Um, this is a bed cover that Muhammad made recently using um, a design from the marble work. Um, and one of the things that Muhammad will tell you more about is thinking about economy. How can we produce beautiful things that are made by hand where you limit the, the, the handmade element to one central part so that the, the bed cover doesn't cost too much because as craft becomes more and more expensive, it becomes, more or becomes less affordable and it's important for it to be, to find a market that can actually pay, afford to pay for it. 
And here is another example. Here's a detail and the cushion that Muhammad also made. Um, now I'm just going to talk about two examples of Hani's work. One of them, this is a traditional tent for religious festival, which uh, someone took a few years, took the photo a few years ago in Cairo. It's handmade. Um, and someone in London wanted a tent for her garden because it's often raining as it is today. Um, and she wanted it based on a tradi traditional design. So Hani and four other people, who are the four people you saw in the, in the post uh, image, reproduced this traditional design exactly as it was um, made 70 or f f 60 or 70 years ago. Um, you may think that reproducing tradition is less creative, but actually it's very important because in following tradition, you remember proportions, traditional patterns, relationships. Um, and if all of your market wants new designs, sometimes traditional designs are forgotten. And so I think the combination of um, repeating the past patterns and sometimes inventing from them and also doing completely new things is um, a valuable and important um, and healthy way of the craft evolving. Here's the tent finished in London. Um, on actually not a very rainy day, but you can see it's very similar to the old one. Um, and this is another piece that Hani made. Um, he made three of them actually to, rep to capture the Arab Spring. Um, one of them is at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The other one is at the Oriental Museum in Durham in England. And the third one's in a private collection. But it's to show you that crafts that talented craftsmen have great diversity and can do different things depending on what they feel, what the moment asks, and also what the client asks. So I'm now going to stop sharing my screen and introduce you properly to Muhammad, um, who I've known for, I don't know, like 15 years or something, uh, and who's in Cairo and who'll tell us both about the first parts of doing the design and also about how he modernizes designs to make them appropriate for a contemporary audience. And if you've thought of any questions that you want to ask in my bit, please type them in the chat. Um, but Ahlan Muhammad. Ahlan uh, Sahlan. At the beginning, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Saif for the great introduction. Uh, and also I wanted to thank the honorable attendees for the opportunity to talk about uh, our artistic craft uh, and how to develop it. Uh, uh, I introduce myself. I am Muhammad Abdul Wahid. I'm 35 years old. Uh, I grew up in family loved the Khmeya art. Uh, my grandfather and father uh, working in this uh, art. My grandfather, who born on 1910, who used to make designs and implement them with very high quality. Uh, my father taught the same craft uh, from his father and developed it to great extent in terms of creating new sizes and uh, new designs and new uh, stick forms. I started out with the love uh, of this craft, entering this craft when I was six years old. Uh, so I could see my father making inscriptions using chalk uh, like this uh, on the design on paper and the modify this with the pen. And after that, I learned how my father uh, make the design on the cotton or the on the uh, applique itself and make a stitches like uh, my colleague Hany will show you uh, to be um, at a final piece like this. This is uh, uh, my father piece from maybe uh, 35 years ago and um, uh, I'm thinking more and more from 10 years ago uh, after my learning to a craft from my father uh, with recommendation uh, from my grandfather. Um, from 10 years ago, uh, I feel the importance of updating the approach uh, for being able to compete in the global markets with our products. Uh, I created modern designs um, and instead of these designs which are crowded with lotus, uh, as Mr. Sir talked about, we try to simplify the design to be more contemporary like this using the same lotus flower, but uh, in more simple and um, more uh, contemporary design. Um, but in this way of uh, updating the design, we have 
to improve another things before uh, completing the piece, we have to uh, prepare it on a very good quality uh, fabric, and uh, we have to, um, to great extent, important for the closure and the accessories used to uh, uh, finish the piece. Uh, I rely more on the delicacy of the design and the use of more consistent colors, maybe one or two colors like this, or I have another piece, for example, the Horus Eye is pharaonic as well, but it more be uh, more simplified. Uh, I rely on this, and this has been recommended by asking uh, uh, our uh, fans of products about the appropriate colors which we have to use, uh, which is suitable for their home decor. Uh, as well as creating new ways to use our handicrafts to enter in furniture and fixtures, clothes and bags, uh, as well as decorating ceilings, homes, and uh, offices. Uh, the dependence of our handicrafts uh, uh, on, on tourism uh, who are uh, coming from abroad to, uh, for, to come here in Egypt and buy our products. Uh, from all of the for all, all over the world, especially from uh, uh, my my lovers London. Actually, we are entering uh, new designs like this zoo. This is zoo, piece including elephant and monkey, and uh, maybe zebra and birds. Also. We make a very simple derwish like this. This is very simple. By using one color, the black color only, and another derwish here using two colors. But it's more simple than before. Um, uh, but also we are uh, control the cost for uh, producing this item and actually use high quality materials uh, on canvas and uh, all the accessories, as, as, as I told you. Now, uh, if you give me the opportunity to, to show you how we make the design uh, to make something like this cushion, which I show to you. Uh, actually, I use uh, paper like this. First of all, um, I set the size for the uh, cushion or for the applique and I cut the paper on the size itself, for example, 50 centimeters uh, by 50 centimeters. I make this a paper on the full size, and after that, I fold the paper on half and on the quarter and on the eighth, one over eight from the paper, like this. And I use uh, something like chalk to, to draw um, a specific pattern which I want to be on the cushion itself. So uh, I, I use to make the lotus from the um, old heritage, as Mr. Mr. Seif told you. We make something like this, lotus. For example, after finishing with the child, this is the um, just powder. So we have to determine this with a pencil to confirm the design itself on the eighth paper, like this. And this is a lotus flower drawing. After that, I use something like this to make holes on the outline, which I made with a pencil, to be like this. And I make the holes on the eighth of the paper, and after that, I make the design one to one uh, like this, so the design become fully hold. So I can show to you right now how to use the uh, white powder, white baby powder, uh, to put on the paper, and by using um, any cotton piece, any small cotton piece like this to make the holes to keep past the, from the paper
in order to make the design like this. After that, I can show you the full unit, which we are make by the chalk, then the pencil. Now we can determine it better by the white pencil. to be fully settled and complete all of the caution by writing by the white pencil on the dark background. On the uh, light background, we use uh, uh, any black powder to pass from the design as well to be on the canvas or any uh, light color like creamy or something. So we use um, uh, dark powder. So uh, I'll give my colleague, uh, artist Hani, to complete how we use the design on the cotton to complete uh, how to cut the pieces and the potters in the uh, canvas or the, on the background uh, like this. And to show you how to fix the pattern, the cotton pattern with specific colors which are used to, be, uh, to draw the, the pattern with the cotton. So uh, I'll leave the discussion for my colleague, Hani. Oh yeah, Hani, you're live. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Uh, for, for all. And uh, hi, Dr. Saif. Hi, Mr. Mick. Hi, Mohammed. Everything well? Okay, uh, thank you very much for Mohammed uh, for, uh, for speak for the design. And then I complete the say for Mohammed. After finish Mohammed, the, after finish Mohammed the design, for example, like this, I put it my, my design paper, finishing Mohammed for uh, the background like this, and I make by carbon, make small points. I complete the points by pencil, same, make Muhammad, okay? And then I make the work like this. I put my fabric like this and I working. I make a stitch by stitch, a stitch by stitch. And very important, I make small, small stitch. Very small stitch like this, very important. And after coming these points, I cut by scissors like this, okay? And then, for example, if you have round, round work like this, I cut, I cut like this, okay? And then I turn it, the fabric like this. Also, I, I make, I make in these points, a small stitch like this. I am working slowly now, but in the normal, I work fast. And now I working on the difficult background. Now, the canvas, the canvas, it's, it's difficult for me and for my needle working like this. If I have a background, more easy than for me. <coughs> okay, I turn it like this, my work. And I make a small stitch 
Magazines. Okay. After coming these points, also, I turn it my beast like this. Okay. And I like finishing one for us because you can see how I do it. Okay. I turn it like this. And I make a small stitch. Now, are you finishing the applique? <clears throat> it's good, or uh, I am uh, I, I'm sorry, I am I am Hani Abdel Adir, uh, tent makers in Cairo in uh, 33 years ago, and my grand uh, grandmother and my grandfather. And my grand grandfather, Sheikh Al Khiyamiya, Mahmoud Al Mikawi, same say Dr. Sir, okay. And this work, I like the work too much. I like my work too much. And you can see all I I I working the first more better than I say. Yeah, I say I am Hani Abdel Adir, and and like this after after the work. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope uh, all enjoy for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Hani and Muhammad. And um, what we thought is that actually one of the most interesting things is actually to interact with people who are specialist craftsmen. And so um, please ask any questions you want. And maybe, sh make, shall I look at the questions and then suggest who answers them uh, yeah we have three um, one question and three com uh, two compliments from the same person okay <laughs> well uh, thank you Linda Kelly for your kind compliments to Muhammad and <laughs> to Hani. Thank you. Um, and Rabi Al-Fadl is asking how many hours would it take to embroider the whole pillow uh, one thing I think is that it's not the size of the piece that determines how long it takes. A, a piece can be small, but take a lot of time, and it can be large and, and also take less time. So, yeah. Mahani, the piece that you're doing now, how long will it take you to finish it? Uh, after, uh, after one month, Dr. Seif. Okay, can you, can you hold it so we can see it? Yes, very sure, very sure. <laughs> Okay. So this is what one meter by one meter? No, uh, about uh, one sixty by eighty centimeters. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's a long piece. It's a long piece. Yes. Okay. Okay. And this one will take one month. Uh, one month for okay. uh, for the work and every day about uh, eight hours work or ten hours work because it's very detailed and the the background also it's very difficult for my needle working. So the canvas is more difficult than the cotton? Yes, very sure, Dr. Sir. Yes. Okay. Very difficult for my needle, very difficult for my finger also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can, you, can, you show, um, can you show us the canvas again? Can you show it close, please? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, closer. 
اقفل يا يوسف اقفل يا كاميرا اقفل الكاميرا على الشغل لايك ذيس دكتور سيف قرب شويه من فضلك قرب يا يوسف قرب على الشغل قوي Okay. Well, uh, Yasmin Mita had a question about seeing the canvas. I hope you can see it now. Um, it's a kind of canvas fabric, but it's quite thick and that's why I think it's hard for the needle. Um, we have a question about, are the workshops licensed and do they face bureaucratic problems or receive support? Um, yes, they are licensed. Um, maybe Mohammed and Hani, maybe you can talk about some of the difficulties and Mohammed, maybe you can start. What yes. are some of the difficulties that you face? Actually, uh, um, we are depending too much on the uh, tourists that come uh, abroad from our outside Egypt. Yani. So uh, we are depending on tourism. So uh, because, for example, of um, uh, Corona pandemic, the direct demand for our uh, applicants uh, has become very low. And we will hope uh, that there will be a new marketing channels that support our craft outside, especially in London. Okay. What about any challenges that are bureaucratic? I mean, do you face, do you face challenges in terms of running the business and any of that kind of thing? I mean, how interested, I mean, how important does, does, the, does the Ministry of Culture, for example, recognize the importance of the, the craft? Actually, there is a rule for, can I reply, please? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is a rule for uh, Ministry of Culture, uh, but, um, uh, we used to, to sell our products uh, for foreigners. So actually, they are used to make uh, uh, something like exceptions or, uh, or festivals for our handicrafts outside. It will be successful uh, worldwide in, in USA or London, England, French. So um, there is a rule for uh, Ministry of Culture, especially last five years. Okay, uh, thank you. So they do organize exhibitions and also in Egypt as well, right? In the exhibition fair ground and in other places and in Sharm el Sheikh. And yes. So I hope that answers. That. That. There's a question about do you use the same color thread for, for example, if Henny is doing a blue, a blue piece, is the thread blue or, or do you use like beige for everything? Does the color of the thread match so usually we are using the the same color for uh, cotton the thread color will be the same for example if we cut a black piece so we have to make thread uh, with color but sometimes some our, some of our clients used to, to uh, or like to make the uh, stitches with another thread color to appear the quality and uh, how this we how the stitches are very narrow from uh, everyone uh, okay, and actually, one thing I want to say is that the quality of the stitching has improved a lot. Like, if you look at the pieces that are more than 100 years old, the stitches are less fine than they are today, because today, these are made as pieces of art that people buy because they're very beautiful and they look at closely. But historically, with the tent behind the king, no one is going to go and look very closely at the stitching of the tent. So. It doesn't have to be as fine, it has to be durable. But today, things like the color of the thread is very important. Okay, there's another question. Um, do, different, do people from different countries like different colors? Yes. So, for, for example, uh, the American people uh, like uh, too much colors. Uh, uh, something like this fleet, which I showed to you. Uh, maybe here we used 26 colors. Uh, but maybe French like light colors, like creamy and white, and uh, uh, maybe white and um, uh, little bit uh, uh, gray. They are like powder color. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we are used to make 
uh, two or three colors on our design, but for uh, in, in, in nature pieces, something like this, we used to make uh, a lot of colors. Mm. Some people like this, and another people like to, to use one. Yeah, like the one behind me, I don't know if you can see it, but um, yeah. it's two colors and it's very pale. And this yeah. one was made, I know, I imagine that this is what you, when you say French people like these pale beiges and creams, you mean the one behind me that you yes. cannot see, right? Okay. Um, Hani and Muhammad, yes. um, you, how, do you, did your families live in, in Darb Dar al-Ahmar where the, the Khayameya is or do they live far away? Yeah, my, my father born in Dar al-Ahmar uh, beside Khayameya. Uh, uh, this place called the Qurabiya. Al Qurabiya is uh, very close to Khamea Street, maybe three or four minutes uh, far away. But uh, now he uh, is leaving there and going another place. But my my grandfather is uh, he he was born there, and my father continues studying and uh, learning the techniques of uh, art craft there in this place uh, and develop the skills. Uh, on how to improve the technique of the work by sharing experience with a lot of people on Khemeh Street. And where do you live? Now? Yeah. Now in, in, in um, Mukattam City. Okay. It's maybe 30 minutes from uh, Khemeh as well. Okay, and Hani, you... And me, and my, my grandfather uh, my grand, uh, 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 did uh, about uh, uh, in... Uh, about 40 years ago, 60 or 70 years ago. And now uh, the house, it's, uh, it's in Al-Khiyamiya. In Al it's, it's a very, very old house, about uh, 150 years ago. And uh, the, the house, it's now already in Darb al-Ahmar also, in okay. Al-Khiyamiya. But you live in Muattam as well, right? Uh, now, uh, after married, I go to Al Muattam. Yes, I live in Al Muattam. Yeah. So he's, my, he's my neighbor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Mu'attam is not that far away from historic Cairo. It's, I mean, it's yeah. quite close. It's about yeah, yeah. 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Same, same Muhammad, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. There's a, a few keen appliques. Okay. That's the name for them. They're asking what type of materials are best, or what materials do you use? What materials, Hani? Maybe you yes. can answer uh, first and then... Uh... This question for me, Mr. Mick. Are you right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the best fabric, uh, you know, uh, Egyptian, Egyptian cotton. It's very best and very nice. And I, uh, I sell uh, my, uh, my fabric in el, uh, in el Khiyamiya also, in the Darb al-Ahmar. And all my material, it's cotton 100%. Uh, not 100%, about... Uh, 80 or 90 percent because if uh, if all my fabric it's a cotton 100 percent i think uh, you have a problem for wash okay. so, uh, sometimes can i can i raise please uh, yes please. yes yeah uh, sometimes we used uh, specific materials uh, depending on the design itself so, uh, for example, if it's easy or simple design, we have to use 100% cotton. But as Hani told us now, sometimes we have to use on curves, we have to use uh, 90 or 90, 95% cotton, and maybe the remaining uh, will be uh, polyester or something to help us to, to make curves uh, 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 pricelessly. And there was another question, do you dye your own materials? Sorry? Do you dye the materials? Yeah. Um, actually, for the safe, I swear to you. No, but you don't have to buy it yourself, right? No, sometimes we are buying uh, the, the material itself from the, uh, the vendor who are uh, selling the material, but uh, in a specific time, if the client uh, want a specific dark beige or a specific dark red uh, and we um, unable to find it in the market so we can uh, buy any red but 
uh, we are trying to repair it, but by the uh, natural resources. For example, using uh, something like tea or um, another um, uh, natural resource to fix the color, to dark it, to light it, something like this. But actually, we are buying the material itself from the vendor. Okay, that's now, yeah, now we are we are we, we have a lot of uh, color scheme. Before, maybe my grandfather told me that uh, we are using a Z or four colors. Uh, actually, as Mr. Safe uh, show us the appliques, the old appliques, maybe they are depending on the red, on the green, a specific blue. But now we have a lot of reds, a lot of blues, a lot of greens. Uh, it may it may be uh, easier to us to make um, specific pieces uh, used uh, different grades from the same color. For example, different blues, different greens on the same applique. Like the, the, the piece which is uh, on behind, the lotus one, the, 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 the blue oh. lotus one. Okay. Um, Hany, can we see the blue one behind you? Yes, Dr. Sif. Okay. This one using different uh, blues uh, from the same color. So uh, we are using maybe six or seven uh, grades of blue. If the client like blue, if the client like green, we can also make a specific design on a specific colors uh, depending on the uh, client uh, taste or, uh, or client, we any, uh, um, if, if the decor of the home uh, on a specific color scheme, so we can make something near to the uh, uh, home decor. Actually, I want to say something here on the natural uh, appliques. We make the work twice. For example, here, the, this is flower. We make the cotton uh, uh, on first, and after that, we make the details with the thread, like this. We make the details with threads to show the, the monkey face, to show the banana, something like this. So uh, we use we used to make uh, threads uh, in order to uh, determine the details of the faces, the details of the flower itself, uh, how the sun or how the uh, something like this sky with the birds. So we are depending on the uh, post techniques. <coughs> how to fix the cotton on the uh, canvas, as uh, my colleague Art Stahani uh, show you right now. And the stage number two, if you want, we can extra detail by the threads. Okay, there's a question about how many tent maker workshops are there today? Uh, maybe on the street, maybe 30 or 35 shops um, for all the street. But actually, um, uh, there are small outlets outside Khiamea uh, in different places. Uh, in Cairo and in Aswan, Luxor, Sharm el Sheikh, or Gada. Um, uh, and uh, they are, all of them are uh, hope to uh, sell the Khemeya pieces. But as I told you, uh, depending on the um, existence of um, tourism. Okay, do you think, I mean, one of the things that we discuss a lot is how can the craft continue? Do you, think yes. there, do you think it's something to worry about? Like, I'll sure. ask you sure. I'll ask Kenny, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, both of us can answer. Okay, you answer first and then Hany. Yeah, great. Um, actually, uh, the, the, this technique or this art uh, require the people or the, or the person who works to love it. So, um, this is the first thing. Second thing, uh, it will be uh, uh, yani used to, to make income for the, um, for the, who, the one who make it. So n right now, we have a very, a very big problem, also because of uh, non-existence of tourism. Um, there is no encouragement to continue on this. So uh, some people don't continue learning for uh, their generations because of this because uh, they cannot found uh, the, the needs 
uh, to live uh, from this art. So, uh, and most people uh, working on other uh, jobs um, uh, besides the job to make balance uh, how to live yani, um, fairly. Uh, but uh, actually, we, we are trying right now to uh, teach the new generations by schools like uh, some places support the, the, the learning uh, techniques like uh, uh, Khan or uh, some places make training for maybe four or five months how to uh, make the new generations uh, make this uh, a place. But you, but, you, but you think that the, des that the modern design you showed us like the Lotus which is simple and the quality yes. is very good that's yes. actually to try and guarantee the continuity of, of, the, of, the, of the craft, right? Yes, actually uh, we are going uh, this way by discussing with our uh, product fans um, how to develop the design to be near to your uh, thinking, as I told you. But uh, this is the same uh, historical lotus flower, but in modern way or modern uh, technique, which is maybe more preferable uh, for our clients worldwide. Okay. Hani. Yes, Dr. Uh, do you think? I mean, do you think that it's a difficult craft for it to continue? Any emustabal al harfa frayak? Wallahi, yani, I see, I see, Dr. Saif. Uh, yani, not, not a lot of person now in Egypt uh, like this war, working, yani. Uh, just, uh, just uh, a lot of people like the computers or something like this, easy than this war. Uh, every day, for example, every day I I I, I sitting and I uh, I working about eight hours work every day. Impossible any small person uh, turn it now and uh, working like me. I make I make many workshop in Europe. In in America I make workshop. In England I I make workshop. In Australia I make workshop. But in Egypt I hope I hope make a school, a school for tent makers. This is my dream, my dream in Egypt, my dream in my work, because my work, it's a um, go-to for dead. I don't like this. I, I like, like my, I, I like my work, uh, go-to for good, good way. This is my dream. Okay, but you think that young people prefer to have other jobs, right? Uh, yes, right, Dr. Steve. Uh, yes. Mich yani not not uh, not tent makers. Okay. Any any easy easy work, yani. Like bankers. Yeah. But the Euro people, the Euro <laughs> people, uh, good. <laughs> okay, so banking, banking. I'll ask Penny and I'll ask Mohammed. <laughs> Are there yes, any doctor. young people working for you? Yes, Doctor Sif. Yes. How young? Yes. yes. Maybe from fourteen years old. Yes, same Mohammed. Fourteen, 14 years, years old. old. Yeah. Yes. So starting from 14 to make straight lines, uh, something like borders like this, how to make straight lines. They are teaching how to make straight lines first. After that, we are uh, uh, yani raise the learning curve in order to make curves like something like this, how to make curves. And uh, maybe from uh, six months to one year, uh, he can make uh, a completely applique, a simple one. And after a lot of experience, he can make something like uh, the piece which is behind me. Okay. And there's a question for Hani. Yes, Dr. Sip. The design of Goha, which is behind yes. you. Yes. Can you just move a tiny bit? The donkey. Okay, yeah. It's a story. It's a nice story actually about an old and a young man and a donkey. And they would, wherever they walked, some uh, of I, the I, I am so I am sorry Dr. Steve. Yes. I have I have a story I have a story for this one okay. uh, I have <laughs> I have uh, one book uh, Egyptian American book for uh, Goha story uh, the name of this book uh, uh, Goha the wise fool okay uh, I make this book uh, in 2005 and uh, this is the first 
first thing of Goha. Goha and this son uh, up for the donkey. The people say, uh, no, I am sorry. Goha, the, this is the first picture. Uh, Goha and the small boy up for the donkey. The people say, uh, Goha, are you crazy? Uh, are you fat? And the Goha, the, the donkey, it's very young. And another one uh, up for the donkey, the small boy, and Goha walk in the floor. The people say, Goha, are you crazy? A small boy up for the donkey, and you, big man, walk in the floor. The third one, Goha up for the donkey. The people say, Goha, are you crazy? A small boy walk in the floor, and you, up for the donkey. The, <laughs> the fourth one, <laughs> the fourth one, Goha, 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 and his son walk in the floor. The people say, Goha. Uh, are you crazy? Why you bring the, the donkey you carry or why? The, the last one carry the donkey and walk. <laughs> so you <laughs> cannot satisfy uh, all of the brothers, yeah. all people. <laughs> yes. Is, is, it still, is, it still, is it still a popular design? It's, it's a very, very good design. And I make uh, the design in uh, 2005. And uh, I am uh, the first one make uh, the Goha story and make book also. Okay, thank you. There's thank a you. question about something I mentioned that historically most of the people are men. Are there women that now work in, as tent makers? Uh, is this question for me? For both yes. of you. Do you have women that produce things for you? Yes, yes. I have uh, about uh, five, uh, five women work for me, but in the houses, not in the shops. Okay, okay. and Mohammed? Yeah. Actually, uh, the, the, the woman uh, uh, are uh, patient uh, nowadays and before, so uh, they can make appliques, but actually they uh, take experience on um, uh, more uh, years than the men. Why? Because of sharing experience. For example, when I sitting with Hani on his work, workshop, uh, maybe I uh, raise my learning curve by seeing something. Uh, but the woman make good good work, but maybe the learning curve uh, need time to purist. Oh, that's interesting. That So in answer to the question, it's traditionally a male profession because the canvas was big and heavy. Um, now there are women involved, but they work from home. And one point that Muhammad, which I think is an interesting point that it's easier to learn if you see other people doing it. If you're sitting at doing it on your own, it's harder to learn from some of this, the tricks of doing it well. Yes. And actually it was interesting, the tent that Hany made for the lady in London, um, because it was a big piece of canvas, there were four people sitting making it together. Um, and it made me realize, like in the first image I showed you, that Historically, it would have been a community activity of people working on one piece together. Today, um, people tend to work on their own. Each, each person is sitting there making a piece on his own, right? Yes. Let me think, are there, Mick, are there any other questions? Uh, well, interestingly, you talked about the, the tent that was made commissioned in London, and somebody's asked, uh, do they undergo a waterproofing process? Ah, uh, yeah, well, you can talk, or in, Hany can answer, and Mohammed as well. Well, when we made this tent in London, I kept on telling Hany, oh, you have to make sure that you wash it many times so that the color doesn't run. It's, Thank it's, you, it's God. It's rain. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> I, I, I wash my fabric before the war. This is so, very important. <laughs> this is very important step. Uh, actually, the, the, the cotton materials, that's why we are using cotton materials uh, better than uh, any other material. Um, there is a lot of um, uh, material grades um, we are buying, but actually the, 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 the cost of, uh, between the uh, beast grade and the lowest grade is not too much in comparison with the uh, applique price. So actually, we used to, uh, all the Khamea, or the majority of them, uh, used to, 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 uh, to buy the high quality material. Uh, and uh, we are washing the uh, material before uh, uh, working with. 
for two reasons. First one, to be easier to us uh, to cut and fix uh, by stitches. It will be more uh, soft when uh, uh, put in the water. And for another reason, uh, in order to, com uh, to confirm that the color is fixed, uh, if the color is not fixed, so we are, uh, um, for me, well, I exclude the, the color itself from my uh, uh, color used. Okay. So it's an important part of the process um, because these, I mean, I, I think also historically these tents were used many, 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 many times. So they had to be durable. And today they're, very, they're fine pieces and people pay a lot of money for them. So the quality of the colors and the fabrics and the thread and the stitching has become even more important. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, we use uh, our art uh, as well on the clothes. So for example, on jackets or t-shirts or clothes. So uh, we have to use the, the material used and they choose uh, very high quality materials, especially in clothes and furniture. Um, in order to um, confirm it would be durable, mm -hmm. as you said. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Um, there's one about, you can probably answer this best, Saif, which is around the commission pieces, the, the, the royal ones that were commissioned some years ago. Are they preserved somewhere? Are they on display? Um, yeah, I mean, there are still old pieces that survive and some museum collections have some of them. Um, so yeah, there are, there are some examples um, from different periods. And there are also some very old fragments that survive that, that tell us what dyes were used historically and what stitches were used. But um, I would say that the, there are pieces surviving from like 120 years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And are they, are they on display anywhere? Uh, in some museums, yes. Um, I'm trying to think. In Egypt, there probably aren't old ones on display because in Egypt, they continue to use them and use them and use them until um, they, they, they were worn out. And interestingly, many of the old ones that survive survived because people bought them and took them to Europe or America. And usually when they took them home, they realized they were very big and so they didn't use them and they kept them in storage. And this is what preserved them. Hmm. Okay. I'm just looking to see what other questions there are. Um, okay. I'll see. Um, people are very interested to find out where they can get hold of one. Okay, well, let me, I'll share the screen again, and I'll show you the contact details. One second. Okay, so on the screen are Hani and Muhammad's email addresses, and also Muhammad's Instagram page. There's also a Facebook page, the Tent Makers of Cairo. Um, which posts images of work for sale. Someone asked about commissioned pieces. Yes, I mean, many pieces are commissioned according to what colors you want, what design, what size. Um, and I'm sure Mohammed and Hani and the community of tent makers are always happy to receive commissions. So um, I hope you have the contact details. Um, there's a question, which is a very important question. Why is the market low for Egyptian buyers? Um, is it due to the taste and the design or is it because they're expensive? So I'm going to ask Mahani and Muhammad both to comment and then I'll comment yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Okay, uh, Muhammad, you can start and then Hani. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, first, uh, this is because of um, um, the, the closure technique actually um, maybe last uh, 15 years, the closure techniques was uh, not very good. Uh, the design is very crowded, a lot of work in stitches, but the closure, maybe the zebra bottom, something like this, is not um, uh, closed uh, pricelessly. Right now, um, all of the uh, uh, old people maybe uh, think about how to develop the, 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 the closure techniques 
and using um, high quality materials. Uh, this is the first reason which are, uh, we are uh, past this uh, by using this uh, high quality material. Another thing, um, how to develop the design. Uh, this is solves the problem of uh, high price matter. So when we make uh, a simple pattern with, with very high quality, with very high quality of closure, so we can sell it uh, to uh, um, handmaker lovers, handmade lovers, and uh, uh, actually uh, interest about the um, quality and the colors which are used. So, okay. but, yeah. But why, why do you think the demand is low in the first place? I mean, you came up with solutions of design and color and finish, but is it because it's expensive or is it because Egyptians don't like these traditional patterns and designs? I mean, what's the reason? Um, I'll, I'll ask you the reason. So when you go into most Egyptian houses, you don't find Khayameya. Why? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe it's a little bit expensive because um, a very small cushion like this take three or four from three to four year, uh, days. So uh, maybe our day cost on, on, on medium or on average maybe uh, something like $15 or $20 at max. Uh, so for highly qualified person, yeah. So, uh, uh, that's why uh, the people here in Egypt maybe cannot pay uh, this cost for uh, the applique maker. So it's a chance and opportunity for the foreigners to buy this. So it's related to expense? Maybe, yeah, yeah. The majority because of this. Okay, Hani. Hel. الطلب اللي هو هل يعني ليه ما فيش طلب قوي من المصريين في رايك ان عشان غالي ولا هم مش بيقدروا الرسومات التقليديه ان انا انا شايف مثلا في رمضان او ساعات لما جيت لك يبقى في ناس عايزه الرسمه بس عايزين المطبوع عشان ارخص تمام دكتور سيف بس يعني انت علق وانا اي هاف اي هاف اي هاف جاست تو وورليد فور فور ذيس كويتشن دكتور سيف Uh, the people, the people in Egypt, uh, you have some rich and some not rich. Uh, the people, uh, it's not rich, rich, come in my shop in uh, before Ramadan and they take uh, some fabric uh, like uh, like this, for example, like this. It's very very cheap, and the one meter about 50, 15, 15 pounds or something like this. And I have I have another person. Uh, you know the art. This is very important, very important. Uh, the people, the people know exactly, exactly uh, the art, not the work, because my work, art, not work. And some person have a money, and some person not have a money. Same, 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 cushion or something like this. I have three days, three days, just the work, for example, of these small cushions, okay? And I sold something like this about same, same Muhammad, uh, 15 or $20 or something like this. But not a lot of people uh, something like this. The another people like cheap things. Also, I th one thing that Muhammad and Hani and other people always tell me is that people don't always appreciate how much time it takes to make these pieces. Yes. So when they come into the shop and they ask, the, like the panel behind Hani or behind the Muhammad, how much is this? When they hear the price, they, they, they think it's a lot of money because they don't appreciate that actually it will take two or three months of work. And so I know that in exhibitions, when people see that people, Hani and Muhammad and others stitching, that's when they realize that firstly, that it's handmade and secondly, that it's very time consuming and thirdly, that it takes a lot of skill to do it. So I think that part of, it's not only that not everyone has the money, but also some people who do have the money don't realize that um, it's a very fine art. Mm. That's what I think, but please comment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, uh, and you determine the, the, uh, the major reason. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah. there's another question about the small pieces of fabric that you used. That, um, like, do you, do you use very, even the small pieces that you cut from a big piece, do you still use it? Hani, in Fatafid, we do it. Small pieces, uh, after, after finish, my big piece like this, and mm -hmm. I found, I found mm. some small, small thing like this. I keep it, and I make some lotus flowers. Yani, okay. For example, I have some small cushions, some small cushions, lotus flowers. I have in lotus flowers many lines. Yeah. Uh, it will, it will be, yes, yeah. for, for example, it will be something like this. Small details, piece like yeah, this. Yeah. But I put something like this on, on the piece. <laughs> so, so we are using 100% from the, uh, the material at Chapai. Because okay. this fabric is this fabric with a money with a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we save all we save all of our fabrics to use in another design. Yes. And there's one other question about uh, NGOs, Gamayat Ahleya. Do you ever work with them, or I mean, do you sometimes have partnerships with them to do projects related to craft and communities? Yes, I make something like this before. Uh, in um, yes, I make uh, in uh, uh, I make in Benha and in Cairo. Okay, yes. so I do not, not just in Cairo, which I think is important in other areas of Egypt as well. No, no, no. I go yes, to yes, yes. Yes, yes, I go okay. to many area. Okay, Mohammed, how about you? There are another unions and maybe in another uh, countries like Beni Suif and uh, uh, Upper Egypt, Suhag and Asyut. Uh, the people in Upper Egypt like to learn uh, this art. Maybe they are needing to the history and uh, they, they are seeing the, the templates and something like that. So uh, they are like to teach and learn how we make this. Actually, maybe we can say 95% from the people who are working on this art from Cairo. But uh, 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 the Upper Egypt people um, used to take the learning and uh, the teaching from the uh, people in Cairo here, how to make the fully uh, applique, for maybe caution or something. Okay, thank you. Thank well, you are there any other questions or comments that anyone would like to make? Uh, maybe we can give people like a minute or two, but it would be nice to see for the camera to zoom on the different pieces that each of you have. So maybe if we start with Hani and then Muhammad. Muhammad, if you can also show us the ones that you have hanging behind you, that would be good. Hani, can we see what's behind you? Yes, Dr. Saif, I have uh, behind me, I have uh, two lotus flowers, two lotus flowers, and I make uh, this design, Dr. Saif, this one, two designs in one piece. Look at in the middle, I make uh, Egyptian star, mm -hmm. okay, and I put the lotus flowers inside. Mm -hmm. Like this. This is a very good design, and I like this design too much. And then I have a Goha story, complete story for Goha. Also, I have some birds, some mm -hmm. cushion covers birds, and I have uh, some collection for uh, fish, the Red Sea. I, I have in my house today the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I have in another way uh, some collection for, uh, for Dervish or Sufi dance. Okay. This collection. Also, I have uh, some uh, one piece of birds. Okay. Like this. Okay. This is all my behind me. Okay. Well, I think it's interesting that the lotus you have the same design but two different colors. Yes. Yes. Okay. And it shows oh, yeah. you how by changing the colors, somehow you know the design looks com looks different. Uh, I I like uh, anyway. I I am twenty maker. I like the colors. The colors, it's very important for me, mm -hmm. okay? I, I change the colors and the, I choose the colors, very important for me, I choose the colors because the colors, it's very important in the piece. For example, if uh, I put one color uh, wrong in the piece, uh, all the piece, no good. Mm. If I put just one color, for example, Dr. Sif and Mr. Mick and all the people, uh, I put here about it, uh, nine or ten color colors it's okay if i put one color wrong in this piece all the piece it's wrong mm -hmm. this is very important for me okay thank you 
Thank you, Dr. Singh. Okay, Mohammed, can you show us? Uh, yes, uh, I can't reuse this, this piece. Uh, we are using the, uh, the Arabic and uh, Romanic design together. Maybe this is the um, old uh, Islamic Arabic pattern with lotus flower. This is a small piece which Hani uh, told us uh, maybe uh, seven minutes ago. Yes, we are using here. So maybe this piece um, may, takes uh, 45 days including several um, uh, uh, designs on one piece, Lotus, Arabic, and Romanic. Um, this piece as well, I can't show this to you. This one, uh, this is the Islamic traditional gate, but using this uh, by putting um, birds and flowers inside. So people who like um, uh, birds or birds lovers, and uh, like uh, natural life, uh, and also like Arabic and Islamic uh, 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 designs, they can buy it. Um, this one, including uh, flamingo and uh, ducks um, with flowers as well. Here, the derwish, different designs and different colors. Here's another derwish which uh, we can uh, put it in the furnitures or um, use it um, when we make frame like this here, it will be wall hanger. This one is a very simple cat for a kid's room uh, without any face characteristics. Um, this one is a zoo, including giraffe and flowers, birds eating and birds love story. Here is uh, different flowers with different color scheme, backs, this is a zoo, and this is maybe a jungle, including elephant and a zebra. Uh, <clears throat> and this is a pharaonic, pharaonic cat on canvas directly. It's a very simple, but it's required a highly technique person to make this details on the uh, ears and eyes to be like this. Thank you. You are more than welcome. <laughs> okay, well, Mick, we don't, are there any further questions? No, um, just lots of compliments. So, okay. a great session. Well, thank you very much. Um, I shared the contact details and please, um, I mean, if, if you want to ask Kenya or Mohammed questions or if you like their work, um, please uh, contact them. And thank you very much for joining this event of the Barakat Trust. Um, please uh, follow us on our, our website, our mailing list. We often have activities and increasingly many of these activities are online. Um, and we support the heritage and uh, the artistic and architectural heritage of the Islamic world in a variety of ways. We always welcome support and donations um, if you want to make them. But thank you very much. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this session and thank you so much to Muhammad and to Hani. Thank you. Um, like thankfully um, we were able to deal with the technology despite being in <laughs> four different places and two different countries and um, we'd love to hear from you and also to hear what made you join the event whether you have an interest in uh, quilting or stitching uh, where you're based so um, thank you once again for sharing this afternoon with us um, and a thank you especially to Hania Mohammed. thank you Dr. C. thank you very much Thank you for a great event. Uh, we hope to repeat it again, inshallah. Uh, actually, I can say to all of uh, my uh, our attendees today, we can you we can make any design you want, any color you want, uh, on any size you want. <laughs> Me and Hani, we are ready for make this. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Mick. Thank you very much, Dr. Sif. I hope I hope make uh, this uh, event many times. I hope that. <laughs> I hope that. <laughs> We Thank hope you. so as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.